good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we're going to look at another one of those Pokemon that I was leaving till the end, that I didn't think was particularly good, that I didn't think we were going to have much love for. And then it started winning tournaments over in Japan, and I went, oh, yeah, we need to take this a bit more seriously. It's Noctowl. Now, we do have this artwork, which is in the Sword and Shield set proper. But we also have this artwork, which is a gym promo over in Japan, which is one of the best pieces of artwork we've had in the Pokemon TCG in years. Absolute years. So, why did I sleep on this card and why is it so good? Well, our translation today comes from the lovely David Hockman over at LimitlessTCG.com slash translations. And if we start off with the basics, we got 110 HP, which is fine. For a stage one, it's not particularly high. It's not atrocious. It's fine. We've got a retreat cost of one, which is kind of helpful for stuff like U-turn board and retreating, so that's kind of nice. We've got a resistance to fighting, always nice to have a resistance. Yeah, we've got low HP, but with more Pico V looking really good, we should see a lot more fighting decks. Well, a lot of fighting decks. Not to mention we just saw the giant regional in Japan won by Pikachu and Zekrom. So yeah, we should be expecting some fighting. Having a resistance is quite nice. And a weakness to lightning. I mean, I just mentioned more Pico V. And yeah, their main attack will get you. But it's still a not great weakness. The one saving grace is that with a single copy of Electro Power, their first attack with weakness will do 100 rather than get a KO. And you're a colorless Pokemon. That means no extra tips, no extra tricks, no hitting for weakness. The Garchomp days are long gone, unfortunately. Um... Does mean you get to use Triple Acceleration Energy, but then there's like a billion non-colorless Pokemon that can use Triple Acceleration Energy. So I don't know how much we're loving it. Anyway, what does it actually do? Well, the first attack we're not going to spend very long talking about because it's not very good. Two colorless energy, 40 damage, who cares? Just, who cares? Like, yeah, woo, no, no, come on. Yes, I know it gets a one-hit KO on Ditto Prism Star. Yes, I know that Sinisty will be one-hit KO'd by this. There are the odd super weak Pokemon that will go down to this. But let's make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't some giant attack which is going to be great. On a basic, maybe two colorless energy 40 damage would be acceptable. Not good, just purely acceptable. I mean, we don't have double colorless energy at the moment, so... Yeah. I mean, look, we've got Welder. More on that in a moment. I am not infused by this attack, and you shouldn't be either. But there is an attack here which is pretty gosh darn good that you should be excited about. Free colorless energy, and it's a little bit wordy, but let me walk you through it. Choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Your opponent shuffles that Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their deck. And you shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck if your opponent has no bench pokemon this attack does nothing so you're never doing anything to their active you're just getting their bench pokemon away you're getting rid of their bench pokemon and then you're rolling but is that such a bad thing like are we particularly upset that we're not getting rid of the active when we're constantly constantly getting rid of the bench and we've seen a few cards like this in the past but we're talking ones that can just get rid of your opponent's active I mean, one of the best was, for instance, you know, Tapu Fini. GX, okay, but it was a basic and it was for a colorless... No, wait, I'm lying to you. It was for a water energy. And you shoved your opponent's active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their deck. But if they didn't have any bench, it wouldn't work. Now, we did actually see Beware GX that let you discard your opponent's active. And that did actually work. Even if your opponent didn't have any bench, i.e. you could win the game. But we're also talking four energy on a stage one, so 
it wouldn't work all that often. Now, that's still a card I wanted to play around with far more than they ever actually did. But the point is that this can be a very disruptive deck. And like I've said, it's already started to see some success, some tournament wins over in Japan. And essentially, the goal here, very simply, is to just continually take away your opponent's bench Pokemon. Any bench Pokemon that they want, that they're looking to use, you get rid of. And then... Well, I mean, at some point, hopefully, you take away their active, but, well, that, that's a little bit less important. I mean, one great trick we've got here is to potentially use a whole bunch of gusting to just grab Pokemon in the active that aren't important. So, stuff like Custom Catcher, stuff like Great Catcher, and Great Catcher is particularly great here if your opponent grabs a Dedenne and pops it on the bench, because that Dedenne, I mean, a Dedenne can attack and ironically will hit you for weakness, but it's not exactly exactly their goal to start winning the game with Dedenne. And then you start taking out their bench. Your opponent uses Welder to attach energy, you just take it out. And like I say, if their active's got all the energy, you flick it to the bench, get rid of it. Now, sometimes with Welder, maybe they can reattach it, but they've still got to get the welder in hand and they've used some welder right so they might not have as many welder decks like malamar and naganadal accelerate from the discard pile but here you're putting all the cards back into their deck so they're not just going to be able to reattach the energy from the discard because the energy isn't in the discard to reattach see where we're going with this this can be incredibly disruptive of course the other thing that you can do is just run your opponent out of bench Pokemon, get rid of all their bench Pokemon, and then take out the active. Now, let's be clear. When I say run your opponent out of bench Pokemon, I don't necessarily mean make it so they have no bench Pokemon. What I mean is make it so they have no viable bench Pokemon and then start taking out their active. If they've got some random basics and stage ones, if, if they've got stuff like Pidgeotto on the bench, you don't need to worry about getting rid of that if they've got no attackers. Now, obviously, that gives them consistency, but it's not going to help them attack right now so you can leave them till the end and start knocking them out when you've got rid of all their attackers what you're trying to do is run your opponent out of energy and for some decks this is going to work amazingly let's say your opponent uses a, a red and blue evolve up one of their gx's attach two energy from the deck well, then you just make them shuffle away and they've lost their energy and they've wasted their tag team supporter. Bearing in mind, red and blue only attaches the extra energy if you discard cards from your hand. It becomes even a little bit funnier. Now, I talked about gusting a moment ago. The actual best thing here is Fione. Now, what Fione does, if it's on your bench, you may have your opponent switch her active with one of their bench and then just put this on the bottom of your deck. It's really good for not decking out. So he's a lot of play over in Japan. But the key point here is that your opponent is often going to have one Pokemon they want to attack with. So I talked about using some gusting cards earlier. It's not that important which ones you use. You just need them to swap their active. So play this. You don't need to draw into any cards. You don't need to play any cards. All you need to do is just use this. Your opponent switches with whatever you don't care, and then you put the Pokemon they want in the active back into their deck, and then they lose all of their energy attachments. Now, in terms of Pokemon to use to get these big KOs afterwards, the list that I'm hearing about are generally playing things like Snorlax V Max, because that can just, if you've got a full bench, do a consistent 210 damage for free energy. And Blacephalon GX, which shouldn't surprise you, Blacephalon GX uses fire energy. And here, basically, in terms of getting your energy on, well, triple acceleration energy is clearly the best option, first of all, right? You attach it, it is free energy, you get to use the attack. It's great. After that, Welder is good if you're playing fire energy. Outside of that, you might just have to manually attach. Now, the thing to remember is, you don't discard the triple acceleration energy here. Because if we go back to the wording of Noctowl, both Pokemon, your opponents and yours, shuffle into their deck. 
So you attach the triple acceleration energy, but then you shuffle it into your deck. And then you don't discard the triple acceleration energy at the end of your turn. It is not there to be discarded. So welder is still a good option if you can't find your triple acceleration energy, etc. But triple acceleration energy will do nicely here. This is a really good Pokemon that I slept on. You know, it's taken me this long to get round to doing a profile. I didn't think it was a particularly good Pokemon. And then I started seeing these lists coming out of Japan. And then I thought a little bit more about it. And now I'm going, yeah, it's actually really good. This is winning tournaments over in Japan. I'm not saying it's going to be some giant top tier unstoppable deck. But I am very much saying this is a viable Pokemon that makes a very good deck that is seeing some success. And for that alone, I think it's deserving of four Wossies. But hey, maybe you disagree. Maybe you think these people in Japan just had really easy routes through their tournaments. Maybe you're not buying Knockdowl, despite how ridiculously beautiful the artwork is. That's all right. There's a comment section. Let's have a nice, friendly discussion down there. Go nuts, but please do remember the rule, would you? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv. Slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all that good stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.